Welcome back. We'll be looking at splines. The main reason why we need splines is because of key lengths that can become excessive to transmit higher torques. As you can see, we have multiple splines around the shaft. That helps us to avoid using a key. Due to key limitations, by increasing the dimensions of the key to get a greater area to be able to withstand more stress. With a spline shaft, you can actually add more splines around the circumference of the shaft and thus increase its torque bearing or load bearing capacity. Let's look at some of the variables we use in spline shaft design. We have in Ka, which is the spline application factor, Km. Km is known as the load distribution factor. It helps for misalignment. And lastly, we have Kf as the fatigue life factor. All these factors are a type of factor of safety this, to secure a safe design in the end. Dimensional variables. Let's look at the dimensional variables for the sector. It's similar to gears and much less variables are required. M for module, that's for the module of the spline shaft. N for the number of splines. We've got DP is known as the pitch diameter, which is central between the root and the tip of the spline. DR, known as the root diameter. T, spline thickness. H, engagement depth. And lastly, LE, effective length. The module has an effect of, on all dimensions. Any dimension that is worked out is based on the module and is captured into all formulas, dimensional formulas that you use in order to get the right answer relative to the module. Number of splines. Number of splines is based on the number of splines around the circumference. The pitch diameter. The pitch diameter is between the tip and the root diameter. There is an exact indication of where the pitch diameter is located. Root diameter. The root diameter is found at the bottom of the spline, as seen in the diagram. The spline tip is found on top of the teeth. The spline tip diameter, as shown on top, is on the outer edge of the spline teeth. Coming back to where we were, the root diameter has already been discussed. Looking at the spline thickness, the spline thickness are seen in this diagram here. The colored section shows you that the formula for the thickness of the spline tooth is 0 0.5 times pi times m. Engagement depth. The engagement depth is clearly shown in this diagram. The distances can be figured out in any spline diagram and is as follows. Looking at the line contact between the spline hub and the spline tooth or teeth, one can see that the distance is 0.5 m plus 0.6 m minus 0.1 m. The m value is indicative of the module, as I've explained. That all formulas for all dimensions for the spline in the hub are based on its module. Effective length. The effective length is the length where the spline and the hub make contact. 
based on their lengths, vice versa. Here is a drawing to show you the effect of length. Here we have the length of the hub. There's the length of the splines. The total length of the splines is not in contact with the hub. It's only a certain length, which is known as the effect of length, is in contact with the hub. Thus, it is dependent on the length of the hub. If the hub is longer, then in the splines is shorter, then the effect of length will be on the splines. So it's a vice versa type of situation. Now let's look at a spline question. A drive shaft making use of splines is used to transmit 30 kilowatt of power at 3000 revs per minute from a petrol engine to a punching machine with intermittent shock loads. Highlight 30 kilowatt, 3000 revs per minute, petrol engine, punching machine and intermittent shock loads. The drive shaft is machined to have 12 splines of 30 degrees pressure angle fillet root involute fixed splines with a module of 2 mm. Highlight 12 splines of 30 degrees fillet root involute fixed splines and lastly 2 mm. The shaft must be able to resist 10,000 fully reverse cycles. The shaft material is a brunial hardness of 240. Highlight 10,000 fully reverse cycles and brunial hardness of 240. The effective length of the spline is given as 0.741 times the pitch diameter. Determine the factor of safety for the spline connection. Highlight effective length and its ratio. The factor of safety. Step 1, we'll be looking at the factors. First of all, we're going to look at Ka. Then we're going to look at Km. And then Kf. Looking at Ka, we're having a punch that is driven by an internal combustion engine. Thus, we will have heavy shock, example punches and shears, etc. And then internal combustion engine. The internal combustion engine is based on medium shock for the power source and heavy shock for the machine itself. Thus we will have a spline application factor of 2.8. Just a quick correction. The question also mentions intermittent shock. Thus, it's best to ignore the intermittent shock mentioned because that is double information. So uh, we choose to go with the heavy shock for punch machines because it's mentioned that it is a punching machine. Looking at the load distribution factor, for this problem we will use Km is equal to 1. To get actual value, please refer to the machinery's handbook for values. Kf, fatigue life factor. We know that the cycles are fully reversed. We also know that the number of torque cycles is 10,000. This means our fatigue life factor will be 1. So we have fully reversed 10,000 to uh, torque cycles. And our fatigue life factor is 1. Okay, now we've written down our values. Let's write down the reason so that we can have some communication in our problem since it's a design problem. For Ka, the reason is petrol engine, which is the driver. And then heavy shock, which is the driven machine, in example, the punch. We have assumed Km to be 1 for fixed splines. Lastly, Kf was selected on 10,000 cycles, fully reversed rotation. Step number 2, dimensions. 
starting with the module, it's equal to 2 millimeters. The number of splines is equal to 12. The pitch diameter is equal to the module multiplied by the number of splines, which is equal to 2 times 12, equal to 24 millimeters. Let's look at the root diameter. In the diagram, for the 30 degree fillet root spline, the profile of basic rack, we are having the pitch diameter right there. We have already worked out the pitch diameter, dp. And we need to find out what's the root diameter. So if we take the pitch diameter minus this distance, multiply by 2, we will have the root diameter. This distance from the pitch to the root is 0.9m. So we will have we will have the pitch diameter minus 2 times 0.9 times the module equal to 20.4 millimeter. Spline thickness is equal to 0.5 times pi times the module. That is for any spline thickness for any diagram that is shown in the machinery's handbook or in the notes. 3,1416 millimeters, which is the final answer there. Engagement depth equal to 0 0.5 times the module plus 0 0.6 times the module minus 0 0.1 times the module will give you 1m, which is the, the module, 1 times the module, and thus equal to 2 millimeters. This is how we got to the answer for the engagement depth. That's the line of contact, and we're looking for that vertical distance, and uh, that's the engagement depth. So we'll be having 0 0.5 times m, and the distance from this point downwards, we already come from that point there up to this line, and then from that line downward up till there is another 0, 0 0.6 times the module. But however, the tip of our, our, our spline is a little bit upward there, or, or the hub is a little bit upward from there, so that distance there, going back upwards to there, is 0 0.1m. So we'll be having 0.5m plus 0.6m going back up minus 0.1m, which will give us m. That's where we got our engagement depth. The effective length is equal to 0 0.741 times the pitch diameter. And it's equal to 17.78 millimeters. Step 3. Material values. Our material Brunel hardness is equal to 240. Let's go look on the table and see what we can get for 240. Okay, looking at the allowable shear stress for splines table, a Brunel hardness of 240 will fall in between 230 and 260 PHN. Thus the maximum allowable shear stress in megapascal will be 206.85 megapascal. Looking at the table below, a lowball compressive stress for straight splines for the very same Brunel hardness between 230 and 260 we have 240 and the maximum a lowball compressive stress will be 13.79 megapascal step 4 factors of safety shearing at the spline root Calculating the torque first, which is 30 times the power, over pi times the speed. And it's equal to 95.493 newton meters. Carrying on with shearing at the spline root, which is 16 times the torque, times Ka, times pi, times the root diameter cube, times Kf. And it's equal to... 160.64 megapascal. Now let's look at the factor of safety. 
Now looking at the factor of safety, which is the allowable shear over the calculated shear is equal to 1,289. This is the factor of safety for shearing at the spline root, shearing at the pitch diameter. SB is equal to 4 times the torque times Ka times Km divided by the pitch diameter times the number of splines times the effective length times the thickness of the splines and then times Kf. Thus SP is equal to 66.5 MPa. This is for shearing at the pitch diameter. The factor of safety. The factor of safety is equal to the lowable shear divided by the calculated shear of 66.5. Factor of safety is equal to 3,11. Stress calculation at the spline root based on crushing. It's equal to 2 times the torque times Ka times Km divided by 9 times the pitch diameter times the number of splines times the effect of length and times the engagement depth times Kf and it's equal to it's equal to 5.802 megapascal let's look at the factor of safety the factor of safety for crushing at the root is 2,3 3.7. Now let's look at the three modes of failure that we have and select the highest factor of safety that can be used for the design. Bearing in mind there are three factors of safeties. The highest factor of safety that is allowed to be used for the design that will satisfy each mode of failure will be 1,289 which is the lowest factor of safety. The lowest factor of safety is what will satisfy all three modes of failure. Thank you very much.